I'm going to show you how to pick the right platform for your idea. Now we're going to be comparing Flutterflow versus Thunkable, but we're going to use the same framework to make sure that you're not wasting your time and you're getting to your goal. So we're going to be learning the framework. We're going to look at the key features of both platforms, the pricing, which one I would choose. So first of all, what is Flutterflow? Flutterflow is a platform where you can create applications really fast. Uh, if you're trying to create a mobile app, it is excellent for it. And it is now available to create web apps as well. With the new changes in 2023, that it just keeps getting better and better and more versatile for your project. Now, what is Thunkable? Thunkable is a platform that's been around for a number of years, and they were one of the first ones to really pioneer um, making no-code applications easier for people. They have a lot of connection with Google, and it is very easy to start. In fact, the way the logic works in the background is it's based off of something called Scratch. So it's a coding language that was originally made for kids to learn, and it's really good because now you can learn the the um basically the structure of coding uh very easily visually which is really nice so the logic as you're going through it uh to note some people might have seen when thunkable someone created a flappy birds app with something with scratch and thunkable so that's something to keep in mind now, if we're looking at key features, one of the things that I would be looking for for Flutterflow, there's a lot of different things that you can be doing. You can program visually, but also the thing about Flutterflow is you can also inject code. So if you want to do more advanced things, that's one of the, the advantages of Flutterflow. And it's made with Flutter, which is an open source code from Google. So it's has a huge community. A lot of people are, are scaling and building apps with it. And that's something to keep in mind. If we look at Thunkable, there are many different things of what you can be doing. Uh, think about it similar to like a drag and dropper for creating websites. You can do drag and drop. You can do advanced logic. You can do device natively. Um, you can do direct publishing. So you can, again, put this into the app store and all those things. You can have different components, so blocks that you drag and drop onto a page, and also, too, uh, naturally native with full functionality. So the mobile experience is very, very different, which is great. So you can have different types of notifications. It just opens up a whole list of different things that you can be doing. Now, uh, let's briefly talk about pricing. The point of pricing, I would say, is you just got to look at the use case. Thunkable would be really good for internal apps as well, but it depends on what you're looking to get done. And the pricing structure is going to dictate like where you can, you can start both. You can start for free on both, uh, for Flutterflow. I would really look at the pro version because that's everything you need to build and deploy a, an app and you can keep your code base, right? So you can download your code, you can deploy it to the app store, all those things. But in the meantime, you can be testing and, you know, testing out with your audience for free and at the $30 mark, even before you go pro. Now, what does that mean? View that as a test. If you can't get people to pay for your app or have a revenue source from your app, you're not ready to go pro. You're not ready to put on the app store. Tons of people think I'm going to put on the app store and somehow I'm going to make tons of sales. If you can't validate and make money from it, that's a clear indication that something's going wrong with your idea and then going from there. Now, if you're saying, well, I'm doing this as an idea for a nonprofit, still looking for funding, looking for people to invest in it, it's still a clear indication. For Thunkable, uh, the pricing, you can start for free and go from there. So if we look at personal plan, it's free for the idea for the initial uh, idea for initial ideas. Starter is $13. Um, keep your no code app development project private and share it with your network. That's $13. And then if we're looking at uh, pro that's $38. That's make your personal app idea available to everyone. Um, if we look at what's going on here, it really depends on what you're trying to build for the free plan. You get 10 projects and that's really good to, to really get started with all these things. I don't see that being a problem. Uh, for the starter plan, it's 20 projects, pro plan, no project limit. Um, the storage, depending on what type of app you're trying to create, 
the storage will change. The account will start with 200 megabytes, goes up to one gig for pro. Downloads uh, for the starter plan, 25 downloads per month, Android only. And pro plan, unlimited Android only. Uh, I would probably say business plan is probably iOS as well. Um, so keeping that in mind, you would have to look at the business plan, but for Android only, um, you can make sure that you can do that at 38. Uh, App Store plus Play Store, it's saying publishing. That's at the pro level. Only thing I would say, okay, so the project sharing. So project sharing, you can do it at Android only. Once you publish everywhere, it's looking like you can publish on both. Web apps to at web apps. So nothing, nothing bad there. Okay, so if we're looking at Flutter Flow and Thunkable, which one I would choose, let's first break down how to pick the right tech. And this is really important because I get questions all the time for what should I use? How should I go about this? And the same fundamental steps go over and over again. It really depends on your idea because every platform, there can be pros and cons of every single platform. Uh, it you might not wanna go for the most powerful platform, but it really depends on your idea. Um, so first of all, write down your idea. You can put it in the comment section or put it on a piece of paper. What is your idea? The next part is thinking about your one main feature. Do, what is your main feature that you're trying to do? If you're trying to create a game, think about not just, I want to create a game. What kind of game are you trying to create? Because it's going to really depend. You can create very basic games on Flutterflow or even Thunkable. But what kind of game are you trying to create? Uh, because that's a very big difference of if I'm going to try to make it work on a platform like Flutterflow or Thunkable, or I would go with a gaming platform for no code, which would be BuildBox. So it kind of just depends. Uh, the next one is your skill level. That's really big because some people will be like, well, I want to know the best thing out there. But if you're just getting started with no code or low code and you have no uh, prior experience, you got to think about, is this something that you want to take time to learn? Also, too, do you want to use no code only where it's only drag and drop and you don't want to learn the principles of uh, programming because that limits what your what platform you can use. And then that goes right into the last part, outcome and timeline. A lot of people will be like, well, I'm willing to put in the work, but I need this done next month. Well, there's no way that you're going to be great at bubble flutter flow in a month. Um, not proficiently. You could use a template. You might get it out you know, but not with major, without major struggles. Um, that's what I see a lot of times when people go with Flutterflow or Bubble, they get so overwhelmed. They're like, oh, I'm not ready for this. When, if they're just, if you're just getting started and you're trying to just prove your idea, maybe softer or something that's easier might be the better thing. So that's really important to think about picking the right tool. Now, in general, let me give my answer of which one would I use, Flutterflow or Thunkable? I'm going to go Flutterflow all day long. Thunkable could be used, and I've used Thunkable years before, but the thing is, I've not seen the advancement against pound for pound other platforms. They Yes, do they still do releases? Yes, but I've not seen any ones that's better or notable than some of the mainstays that I'm using, such as BuildBox, Flutterflow, ShareTribe, Paperform, and the list goes on and on. It's not that it's a bad platform, but what are you using it for? Also, too, the, there might be a, a use case for using Thunkable. Some people might use it, especially if you're used to using Scratch. If you, you have used the programming language Scratch for years and you feel comfortable with it, you really like it, Thunkable might be the best thing for you because you already understand the logic and can build a lot quicker. You're just going to be limited based on some of the things you're going to be doing. But every platform has pros and cons. No platform is the right thing. Now, I'm going to give one more example, talk two more examples about looking at what kind of platform people want to use. I get questions on, well, I want to create a card game or I want to create a certain type of card game. Think about also too, um, have you validated yet? Because you could be thinking about, I want to do all these different cards. And when you're like, well, I just want something to flip over very quickly and work for students, you might use something like interactive, active, interacty, where you can just create flip cards and create a small game there, right? So you you might want to think about, there might be other type of platforms or form builders that are perfect for your use case, but you got to think outside the box. 
Um, if I'm trying to create a two, 2D or 3D game, I'm just going to go with build box. Thunk Thunkable, can you create a game? Yes. Is it made for games? No. Can you still use it for a game? Yes. Does it have major, major limitations? Yes. But every platform, it just depends on what you're looking at. So again, when you're picking the right tech, you need to be thinking about your idea, your one main feature, your skill level and outcome. And then now you go search for a platform, what you're trying to do. An example, a lot of people will use Webflow or WordPress to create a marketplace, but those aren't created for marketplaces. So there's still going to be limitations. I've created a marketplace that was very profitable just with paper form, but I understood the one main feature, what I was going to be doing. And I, that's why paper form was great for me. But if I need to scale a marketplace, there's ShareTribe, ShareTribe Go and ShareTribe Flex. So when you're looking at no-code platforms or platforms in general, that's what you're going to be able to do. If, if you're like, well, I want to learn everything to be able to create anything, that's when it's, it's important to think about, is it time to learn a programming language in order to accomplish that? But that's a whole other topic. There are tons of different languages. And for the most part, if people are just validating and trying to get started, they're never going to have to get to that level. No code and these platforms are made for the masses for you to speed up your process and do those things. Um, th if you want a copy of like how to pick the right tech, there's the link down below where you can see these questions. Also, I'm going to have another video down below that um, I've had for a couple of years out that I keep updating, talking about how to pick the right tech for your project. It's really important to think about these things because you don't want to waste time. Um, and splitting hairs of what you should get started and where you should go. You need to work with purpose. And a lot of times, I'll just say one last thing. A lot of times we go through this and I've had tons of students and clients. I tell them, hey, here's my suggestion. And they're more afraid of taking action and they'd rather research more than just take that first step. It's really easy to consume and you know sign up for these products and platforms that are free. It's a lot harder to start executing. So think about these four things and start executing. Get to work. In the comment section down below, let me know your thoughts, what you think. If this is uh, helpful, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. I do this every single week, and I'll see you in the next video.